Today we are talking about this beautiful camera right here, the GoPro 5. I used this a lot on a recent trip to Belize and a lot of you guys had questions about it after seeing footage from this action sports GoPro camera. I still have my AirPods in my ear holes. Side note, I love these so much. The main thing that I'm talking about today is how do you make GoPro footage not look like GoPro footage in the sense of it being very fish-eyed and GoPro looking. So I'm going to give you four pro tips in order to accomplish this. First order of business is to turn ProTune on. This makes your image much more flat and a little bit less saturated. Number two, turn sharpness to medium. It is automatically set to high, which makes the footage look very just like ugly sharp, not pretty sharp. We set it to medium, you can always sharpen it up in post, but I have found that medium is a good, sweet spot. Number three is probably the most important thing you can do. You want to change the field of view option to medium. It is automatically set to wide, which makes that fish eye look because it's saying, okay, I'm going to capture all of this. When you set it to medium, it narrows down the angle, which makes it look like a normal camera. Like I'm shooting on a point and shoot or a 35 millimeter lens, like on a DSLR or something. The final step is to record in 24 frames per second for a uh, normal video, whether you're talking or don't want to do slow motion. When your final video is 24 frames per second, that allows um, kind of the most natural motion blur as to what our eyes see. So some people record in 30 frames per second. I prefer 24 frames uh, per second. I just it just looks better in my eyes. Now, if you're recording like super fast action footage or recording a cheetah running through a wherever cheetahs run through. Maybe you want to record at a higher frame rate, such as 60 frames per second, so you can really capture that motion. What that means if you want to do slow motion, you would record in 60 frames per second and slow it down 40% in post, or if you record it in 120 frames per second, which you can do on the GoPro, you would slow that down 20% in post, so your final product is 24 frames per second. Math. As you have all of those things, you are going to be left with an image that looks very similar to other cameras and not that kind of distorted fisheye view that you get from a lot of GoPro footage. Now, of course, you probably want to do a little bit of color correction because this image is more flat than normal, but that means you have more control over what your footage looks like in post instead of letting the GoPro decide for you. This is my first time using the GoPro Hero Black recently. I had the Hero 3 Black, so, so many things have changed since then and I kind of want to maybe give like a little bit of a review now that we've reached the second half of the video. If you're only here to figure out how to make your GoPro footage look a little bit less GoPro, thank you for joining me. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. I put out vlogs and creative entrepreneurial content and like tech reviews and all of, I do, I do all of the things I feel like. I will also link in the description below some of my favorite GoPro hero accessories and how I do what I do with my GoPro. Anyways, moving on, um, at first I need to show you this sweatshirt that someone sent me. They're peaches. If you're new around here, my name is Sarah Dici, rhymes with peachy, hence the peachy stuff. So thank you, subscriber, person, internet, family, homie, for sending me this. I asked you guys on Twitter maybe some things that you would want to know about the new GoPro Hero 5 and a lot of you asked is it worth the upgrade from the 3 or from the 4. The biggest difference is the fact that not only does the 5 have a built-in screen to the back but you don't have to have a waterproof case to use it. This is the GoPro camera and you just use this so you can dip this in the water and everything is waterproof so you don't have to have a case. That is a big deal because I used to have a lot of issues with fog um, when you have the camera in a case. Uh, sometimes the camera fogs up and it makes for a lame image. So I have really enjoyed the fact that this is just the camera and you don't have to worry about a waterproof case. It simplifies the process of filming with a GoPro. Something that I'm actually not a big fan of is the touch screen. You know, this is a tiny screen, so you gotta be able to do a lot with 
the touching. I miss being able to navigate through the menus just via the buttons because my main use for a GoPro is whenever I need to capture footage in water or around water. And if this GoPro, if your finger is at all wet, good luck changing the settings. You're just not gonna be able to because the touch screen just doesn't work. I'd be like chilling, chilling in the boat, chilling in the water. Uh, want to change frame rates or something and I would just get frustrated and it wouldn't happen and it would just it would just make me upset and sad. So big changes are the touchscreen, not having to use a water housing and number three is the low light capabilities. The last GoPro I had was the three. Holy cow. If it wasn't perfect and sunny outside, it would be so grainy. The low light capabilities of it was just terrible and this thing actually rules in low light. But is it a big deal for you? It really wasn't a big deal for me because whenever I used the GoPro, it was out in the sun. The battery life is actually fantastic on this thing. I used only one battery for an entire day of snorkeling, which is pretty crazy. So I hope this video helps you take your GoPro footage to that next level and also help you out if you're thinking about upgrading. They pump out GoPros like nobody's business, uh, so I really don't think think you have to upgrade every single time um, because you know my last one was the three and then I decided to upgrade to the five and I'm pleased with with my choice but there are some caveats with this new camera but there's a lot of upsides too so let me know if you like this video hit that subscribe button down below if you have not yet remember all the links are in the description below stay peachy fam okay bye also I forgot to mention, if you want to see a Belize vlog where you see this GoPro footage and editing in action, you can click right here. And also, if you want to see all of the gear, all the camera gear that I brought to Belize in my travel camera bag, you can click right here and then right here to subscribe. Okay, bye!